V-Rising 1.0 has released and with it comes a bunch of changes, including a force wipe for pretty much everyone. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to optimize it for the best possible performance. And on top of this, in the description down below, you'll find a free private server guide, as well as probably a guide on modding the game so you can get even more out of it. Though, for now, let's get into performance. So, having a look at V-Rising over here, at 2K, on a 3080 Ti, I'm getting a solid 150-ish FPS, which is really good. If we pause, head to Options and Graphics, you'll see I'm currently using the high default preset and FSR is set to ultra quality. If we have a look at the native performance, I'm getting a solid 120-ish FPS without any kind of magic upscaling using FSR. Performance has seen a great improvement, especially over the two years this game has had to cook since my last optimization guide. Let's quickly run through the different graphics presets. So to medium, it'll enable FSR to balance, pushing us all the way up to 170-ish FPS. If we disable FSR, FSR disabled, we move to around 130. If we move down to low instead, we jump up to around 150-ish FPS, and with FSR disabled, it's down to 130-ish. So it's pretty well optimized, but for the most part, it's still CPU bound in a lot of cases. The difference between low at 133 and medium at 130 is practically nothing. This is putting more load on my graphics card, but it's still held back by something. Pushing it back up to high, we only really drop 10-ish FPS, which is maybe 8% by putting a little bit more load on the graphics card. So it's mainly the CPU holding it back. And that should be true for most modern, powerful graphics graphics cards in the 30, 20, etc. series for NVIDIA, and the same goes for AMD. The place that you're really going to get your performance optimization is by playing around with options that have to do with your CPU, but we'll get there in just a bit. For now, in your graphics tab, I'd recommend setting your screen resolution to match your display. In my case, it's 2K. Windowed mode should be full screen windowed or exclusive full screen, which on some systems should give you better performance. Brightness is your preference, and these options over here for quality shouldn't have too much of an impact, as you've already seen, on more powerful graphics cards. If you have one, I'd recommend leaving everything on high, as you're probably doing well enough already. However, on much lower end systems, you'll see the biggest improvement in FPS when you turn shadows from high to medium or preferably low, especially on lower end systems, volumetrics as well, and visual effects if you're experiencing severe drops in combat and things like that. Texture quality shouldn't have too much of an effect on most graphics cards, even mid-range ones, as the game currently is using a solid, let's see, 3.2 gigs of VRAM. That's not a huge amount. Instead, scrolling down to advanced, you'll see the biggest improvement in FPS when you have TAA selected for anti-aliasing, which allows you to use AMD FSR. I'd recommend using ultra quality, otherwise quality for the best looking game with a huge improvement in performance. If we simply enable quality for FSR and tab back into the game, you'll see we're sitting well above 150, almost 160 FPS, which is huge. That's a 40 FPS improvement compared to the 120 I was getting before. But if you start to notice weird things around trees and things like that, that's because you're using FSR. And to fix the blurriness, I'd recommend you raise it up to maybe ultra quality so it's doing a little bit less work. And for me, that's definitely improved it. Setting it comfortably 150 FPS, this is fantastic but we can get it even higher. Scrolling all the way down past FSR, frame caps, which I'd recommend turning off, so setting it to no limit. If you're going to be benchmarking, you'll have a bunch of options down here. It should improve your general gameplay when you're messing around. Motion blur is nice to have. Some people enjoy having it. If you find that motion sickness affects you, this is probably something you want to turn off. In my case, it's fine leaving on, so I'll leave it on. Depth of field, if you turn this off, should make the game look a lot more clear. Of course, this is user preference all the time. If you want it on, you can have it on. For me, though, having a much cleaner looking game is more important. I'm sitting at 150, and if I turn it off, I'll still be around the same. Contact shadows, if we turn these off, you'll see we move up a few FPS, maybe five or so FPS, which is probably two or three percent, as we've taken a little bit of load off of our CPU. If we turn off high quality atmosphere, which is the lighting for the game, you'll see barely any change visuals wise, and it's had almost no effect on performance. I assume this will only have to do with specific lighting sources like flame and things like that, depending on what rooms and things like that you're exploring. For the most part, I'd recommend leaving this on. Then blood effects enabled, if you find that you drop tons of FPS when drinking blood from animals and using blood magic and things like that. If you find that the game becomes super stuttery and unplayable, this is what you should come back and turn off. Rim light has to do with characters, although there's almost no effect here really, and performance-wise, there's no real effect either. I suspect this to be something that affects you during the day when you're getting burnt by the sun. I'll leave this on anyways. Screen shake is your preference. Lower this, especially if you suffer from motion sickness. But finally, at the very bottom, we have 
cloth quality and cloth update rate. These both have a huge impact on performance and FPS. Even though there's not too much cloth in the current scene, if I drop this all the way down to low, for example, the cloth update rate, you should see we have a pretty good boost in performance. Here we're sitting at 150, so there wasn't too much of an effect. But for a lot of people, this is where you'll see your biggest improvement as well. Simply turning cloth quality from high to low, we gained a couple of FPS and we moved up to almost 160 there. Frame times and things like that should have definitely improved as well. So for the most part, most of these options shouldn't have too much of an impact. That's a little bit sad, but if you're running super high end hardware, there's probably other things holding you back. For the most part, if you're CPU bound all the way at the very bottom, these cloth options are going to be the most impactful for you. And I'd recommend coming here and dropping them all the way down to low just to see what kind of performance boost you can get. Then if you happen to have a super low powered GPU, messing around with some of these quality settings up here are going to be your best friend. Mostly shadow, volumetrics, and maybe visual effects over here. But besides that, I'm actually surprised by how little a lot of these options have an effect on higher end systems. It seems like there's some other kind of cap holding us back. It's probably still a CPU bound game for the most part as changing graphics settings don't have too much of an impact on my higher end graphics card. But from the options that I've outlined, you should know how to improve performance on a lower end system. Obviously, when it comes too low, you'll probably be best running this on low settings anyways. But if you can consider raising the texture quality for a better looking game to medium, if not high, ambient occlusion to medium, and visual effects may be to medium unless you're getting bad stuttering. Then at the very bottom, FSR, move this to quality or ultra quality, and you should see a huge boost in how the game looks compared to just default low settings. It seems I was cooked here, but anyways, respawning, I'm sitting at a solid 160 FPS, which is relatively similar to what I got, and the game looks really good compared to the lowest of the low settings. So 160-ish FPS, and the only thing we raised was ambient occlusion, texture quality, and FSR at the very bottom. Hopefully this video helped you. And once again, if you'd like to know how to set up a private server, which is a private dedicated server, so not just a private game, make sure to check the description down below for a guide on how to do that. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.